Whether these actors left fans behind during the franchise or after it had concluded, these losses still left Harry Potter fans devastated. From potions masters to ministry officials to magical creatures, here's a list of Harry Potter cast members you may not know passed away. As soon as Harry Potter arrives at his new home at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, he meets his professors, immediately clashing with the school's potions master, Severus Snape. Throughout the series, Snape unfairly antagonizes Harry and his friends, deducting points over small mistakes and squabbles, and favoring students from Slytherin House. Mr. Potter, our new celebrity. The pair's animosity only gets worse when Snape is forced to try to teach Harry the art of occlumency, which could help Harry block his mind against Voldemort. Your lessons are at an end. I did. Get out. However, as it turns out, Snape was helping Harry all along. As a childhood friend of Harry's mother, Lily, Snape was always in love with her, and he pretended to serve Voldemort while reporting to Dumbledore, risking his life as a double agent. Alan Rickman was the perfect choice to play the enigmatic Snape, who turns out to be one of the series' most complex characters. Rickman brought this character to life, becoming a beloved figure to millions of Potter fans. In 2016, Rickman lost his life to pancreatic cancer, and fans, fellow actors, and co-stars alike paid their tributes to Rickman. The role of Albus Dumbledore, Harry's wizened, caring mentor throughout the series, required an actor with enough gravitas and heart to bring this part to life, and for the first two Harry Potter films, Richard Harris played the character to absolute perfection. A gentle giant whose kindness is never diminished by his incredible power, Dumbledore serves as Harry's makeshift father figure and personal teacher, sharing his boundless wisdom with Harry as he gets older. However, when Dumbledore dies at the end of the sixth installment, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, Harry must go it alone, armed only with the lessons Dumbledore taught him along the way as he sets out to defeat Voldemort. Dumbledore doesn't lose his life until the sixth film, but unfortunately, audiences lost the first Dumbledore after only the second installment. After making two Potter films, Harris was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease in 2002, and after he was hospitalized with pneumonia, he died in a London hospital. Michael Gambon moved forward with the role of Dumbledore, but Harris's legacy lives on through his sons, one of whom is the acclaimed actor Jared Harris, who has appeared in shows like Mad Men and Chernobyl. Harry Potter faces plenty of hardship throughout his life, and in his pre-Hogwarts years, most of that turmoil is caused by the Dursleys, a trio of extended family members with whom Harry spent an incredibly unhappy childhood. After his parents are killed by Voldemort, Harry must live with his mother's sister Petunia, her awful husband Vernon, and their dreadful son Dudley, all of whom hate Harry for his magical ability and make his life as miserable as possible. Despite the fact that Harry and the Dursleys hate each other equally, Harry must return to their house every summer when Hogwarts is on break, making them important characters in the story. Any funny business, any at all, and you won't have any meals for a week. As such, when it came time to cast the Dursleys, producers saw fit to cast Fiona Shaw and Richard Griffiths, two titans of the British stage and screen, as Petunia and Vernon, respectively. In addition to working on the Potter films, Griffiths teamed up with Daniel Radcliffe to appear on stage in Equus from 2007 to 2009 on both London's West End and Broadway. But unfortunately, their working relationship was cut too short far too soon. Griffiths lost his life to complications from heart surgery in 2013. After losing his friend and and co-star, Radcliffe led a touching tribute to the legendary actor, saying he was, quote, proud to say he knew him. Plenty of legendary actors appeared in the Harry Potter film series, and few were more well-renowned than John Hurt. As Harry goes shopping in Diagon Alley, he meets the mysterious, enigmatic Ollivander, the man who provides wands to the entire magical community and tells him an important secret about his own wand. I wondered when I'd be seeing you, Mr. Potter. Thanks to a magical bond between Harry and Voldemort, the wand that has chosen the young wizard shares a core with Voldemort's, creating a lifelong connection. Later, Ollivander must help Harry uncover the secrets of the Elder Wand in order to stop Voldemort once and for all. Hurt played Ollivander in a handful of Potter films, including the first and last, but you might also recognize this stalwart actor from V for Vendetta and Indiana Jones, as well as a short stint as the war doctor on Doctor Who and more. 
Hertz became a Knight of the Order of the British Empire in 2015 for his services to drama. But sadly, he passed away only a few years later in 2017 from complications from pancreatic cancer. After Harry is officially introduced to the magical world by Rubius Hagrid, his first official entry into wizardry is when Hagrid takes him to Diagon Alley, the magical street where witches and wizards can buy all of the supplies they need for spells, potion making, and more. In an otherwise nondescript muggle street in London, Harry discovers the Leaky Cauldron, a pub that seems to go totally unnoticed by any non-magical folk. And in the backyard, wizards can gain entry into Diagon Alley by tapping a specific combination of bricks on the wall. As the bartender of the Leaky Cauldron, Tom is an important background character. Bless my soul, it's Harry Potter. Tom only appeared briefly in the film series, but in the first film, he was played by British actor Derek Dedman. Throughout his career, Dedman appeared in a variety of high-profile projects, including A Streetcar Named Desiree in 1991. Deadman passed away in 2014 at the age of 74 from complications from diabetes, leaving the Leaky Cauldron permanently unmanned. Of course, the world of Harry Potter isn't all heroes. Voldemort has plenty of bad guys under his thumb, one of whom is the dangerous werewolf Fenrir Greyback. A ruthless and hungry monster, Greyback bites for fun to create a new army of werewolves. During Half-Blood Prince, Greyback attacks the eldest Weasley son, Bill dealing a devastating blow to Harry and his loved ones, but he's ultimately taken down by the good guys. Greyback required a particularly imposing actor, and Dave Legeno was up to the task. A trained mixed martial artist proficient in everything from Muay Thai to Judo to boxing to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Legeno passed away in 2014 during a hike in Death Valley, reportedly from problems caused by the extreme heat. In the franchise's fourth installment, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry finds himself faced with an entirely new challenge. After his name is somehow placed in the champion-choosing Goblet of Fire for a multi-school Triwizard tournament, Harry must compete, much to everyone's chagrin. Throughout the tournament, he encounters Barty Crouch Sr., a strict, high-ranking ministry director overseeing the operations of the tournament. However, what Harry learns later about Crouch is that he has a tragic past, his son. Barty Crouch Jr., played by David Tennant, was previously arrested with a group of Death Eaters, and he has returned with Voldemort's help to exact revenge upon his father. Since Barty Crouch Sr. is such an established member of the Ministry, it stands to reason that a venerated actor like Roger Lloyd Pack would be the one to play him. Pack worked extensively on British television before he passed away from pancreatic cancer in 2014. When it comes to magical creatures in the Harry Potter universe, few are more mysterious than house elves. This subservient species tends to attach itself to a certain family performing cooking, cleaning, whatever their master asks. However, Harry ends up with much more than he bargained for when he ends up owning Creature, a surly house elf who once belonged to his late godfather Sirius Black. After Sirius's death, Harry inherited ownership of Creature, but it took Creature time to warm to him. Visually, Creature was an entirely computer-generated character, but he was voiced by Timothy Bateson, an established British voice actor. Voicing Creature in the fifth movie, Order of the Phoenix, was Bateson's last role before he passed away in 2009. For the rest of the series, Creature was voiced by Simon McBurney. As Harry enters Diagon Alley for the first time, one of his first stops is Gringotts, the vast wizarding bank that holds some of the magical world's most closely held treasures and secrets. Just to add to its mystique, Gringotts is guarded by goblins, which are easily the most secretive and cryptic magical creatures in Harry's world. And one of the first goblins Harry meets is Griphook, who leads him down into Gringotts' dark and well-guarded vaults. Though Griphook returns in later films, he's played by a different actor as the series continues. In the first movie, Vern Troyer portrays the prominent goblin. And does Mr. Harry Potter have his key? Troyer has a fairly extensive film and television resume, but most people likely know him best as Mini-Me to Mike Myers' Dr. Evil in the Austin Powers franchise. Tragically, Troyer passed away in 2018. His death was later ruled a suicide. However, his performances in everything from Harry Potter to Austin Powers will live on forever. When Harry arrives at Hogwarts, the magic within the school astounds him. Food appears on tables as if by magic. He can wave a wand and make anything happen. The staircases change frequently, and in an unnerving twist, the paintings on the walls move and talk. One of those paintings, the Fat Lady, is in charge of guarding the entrance to Gryffindor Tower, and in the films, she was played by British actress Elizabeth Spriggs. 
A Shakespearean actress, Spriggs only made an appearance in the first film before her untimely death in 2008. Dawn French replaced Spriggs as the Fat Lady, popping up in 2004's Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.